Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom and welcome to today's Daf Yomi, Nida Daf Samaches, Samar Aleph. We're three lines from the top. Dorash Rav. Isha Chayfefes Be'erev Shabbos, Ve'teveles Mo'itzei Shabbos. Rav announced the Chiddush, an Isha can do her Chafifa on Erev Shabbos, although she's only been Tevel on Motzei Shabbos. We know that an Isha needs to cleanse herself from any Chatzitzites prior to going to the Mikvah. And Rav was Mechadish. She could even do that on Erev Shabbos, and although there's a large time gap that's elapsing between the Chafifa and the Tevila, it's okay. Amu Le'er Popular Rav, how can you say that? V'asholach Rav Bigarte, Rav announced with his letter, the Isha Loisach of Erev Shabbos, the Titbel Moitzoy Shabbos. A woman should not be chayfif on Erev Shabbos when she's being toivel only on Matzah Shabbos. It's too large of a time gap between the Chafifa and the Tvila. The whole point of the Chafifa is to ascertain, to be sure, there are no Chatzisas there. So logic says that it needs to be done immediately preceding the Tvila. You can't do it on Erev Shabbos and be toivel on Matzah Shabbos. The Tomei al Ravin continued in his letter, really, in reality, a person should really wonder on himself. We know that in an ordinary weekday, an Isha will do the Chatfifa Bayayim, although she's only being Teva Balayla. Now Rashi explains what is the reason for this leniency. Why do we allow her to leave a time gap between the Chatfifa and the Tefillah? Rashi says the reason is because when an Isha will do the Chatfifa Balayla, immediately preceding the Tefillah, there's a concern, there's a chashash of Muhumma Lebeisa. Perhaps she might be doing it in a rushed manner and not properly ascertaining after no chatzitzis. Therefore, Chazal preferred that an Isha should do chafifa bayoim, although there was somewhat of a time gap elapsing between the chafifa and the tefillah. But in reality, a person should really wonder why is that allowed. And the reason why it's allowed is because that's the preferred method of over um, doing a balayla and risking a rush job. But even that's less than ideal. But Tamei Alatz Hey, How do we allow that to happen? Don't we need that it should be take the chafifa tefila? We need immediacy. We need that the chafifa should happen right before the tefila. And the case when she's tevil balayla and she only did chatzitza that afternoon b'yoyim, there is a gap of time between the two, and it's not take of the chafifa tefila. But nevertheless, Chazal prefer this method in order to avoid the rush. But that's it. That's the maximum allowed. But certainly not to do the Chafifa on Erev Shabbos when she's only being table on Matzoy Shabbos. So when Rabbi heard this, he's my dilemmas. It makes sense, logical. Hadar Uki Rava Moirale. He appointed a speaker and he announced again, Vidarash, Tvorim, Shamait, Lefnechem, Tos, and Biyadi. It was a mistake, it was an error, Bram. However, Kach Omo, Meshed, Rabbiichnon, Isha, Loisach, Ver Shabbos, Vititboil, Matzoy Shabbos. It should not be done that way. A tamel atzmucha, a person may wonder, hey, chayfefes b'yayim, a tevelas b'layla, how do we allow an isha ordinarily on a weekday to do that? Al be'inan, samuch ha'chafifa tevila v'laka. We don't have samuch to chafifa tevila. And therefore, we see that really, ideally, the chafifa should take place immediately prior to the tevila to really make sure there are no chatzitzes. Certainly, we don't allow a chafifa to happen on Erev Shabbos when the tevila is taking place on Matzah Shabbos, as inconvenient as it may be, we don't allow the Chafifa to be done only on Matzah Shabbos immediately preceding the Tefillah. Concludes the Gemara, V'hechasa, Isha chayfefes b'yoyim v'tevelas b'layla. Ordinarily, an Isha should be chayfef b'yoyim and be toivel that night. And like Rashi explained, there is an advantage. There is a maila to do, doing Chafifa b'yoyim since she is not muhumma l'beysa, she is not rushed. V'hechasa, another halacha, Isha loisach ha'fela b'layla. Isha should only perform the Chafifa at night. So it seems to be a contradiction. Kasha, Hilchasa, Hilchasa. Here we're saying Isha should do the Chafifa B'yayim. Then we're saying Isha should do Chafifa only at night. Isn't it a steer? So it's more like Kasha. It's not a contradiction. Ha de Efsha. Ha de le Efsha. One Allah is speaking when she could, an ideal situation, when she can't do the Chafifa B'yayim. It's an ordinary Yayim Chayla, it's a weekday. Then certainly she should do the Chafifa B'yayim. Although she's only been Tayyib Alayla. The second Allah, which says, proclaims, no, Isha Leitzach of El Balayla, it's an absolute, only at night, that's speaking of a case, Layevsha, when it's not possible to do the Chafifa B'yayim, as Rashi explains, we're speaking about a Matzah Shabbos, 
when you cannot do the Khafifa on Shabbos. In that case, an Isha should do the Khafifa Balayla on Matzah Shabbos, immediately preceding the Tefillah, rather than doing the Khafifa on Erev Shabbos. So that's why the halach is very absolute. Loi of Ela Balayla, because in that case of a Matzah Shabbos, it is Loi of Ela Balayla. There's no choice, there's no option of doing Biyayim. She cannot do it on, uh, on Shabbos, nor can she do it on Erev Shabbos. Now this was Rashi's Mahalach in the Gemara. Rashi uh, was Mechadish that there is a Maile's advantage to doing the Khafifa Bayayim so that the Isha is not Muhumma Lubaysa, she is not rushed. And Rashi learned the conclusion of the Gemara. Ha, the Efshar, when she can do Bayayim, she should do Bayayim. Ha, the Lay Efshar, when she cannot do Bayayim, meaning it's a Matzah Shabbos and she cannot do Khafifa on Shabbos. In that case, she should do the Khafifa Balayla. Taisus brings another sheet of the Shiltois, who learns just the opposite. Shiltois learns that it is preferred to do the Khafifa Balayla. This way we ensure that there are no Chatzitzes that arrive between the Khafifa and the Tvila. So he learns the Gemara just the opposite. Ha the Efshar, when it is possible to do the Khafifa Balayla, then you should do it only Balayla. And that's the second halach in the Gemara. Ilchasa Isha Sochav Ela Balayla. On that the Gemara says, Ha the Efshar. When she can do the Khafifa Balayla, for instance, it's a Matzah Shabbos, for instance, it's a regular weekday, then certainly she should do the Khafifa Balayla. However, when she cannot do the Balayla, for instance, suppose it's a Leil Shabbos, or it's a Leil Yom Tif, and she can't do Khafifa at night, then in that case, she should do the Khafifa B'yoyim. Meaning, if it's a Matzah Shabbos or a Matzah Yom Tif, she should do the Khafifa on Erev Shabbos and on Erev Yom Tif. If it's a Leil Shabbos or a Leil Yom Tif, if it's a Friday night or it's the first night of Yom Tif, in that case, she should do the Khafifa on Erev Shabbos and Erev Yom Tif. So in conclusion, and on a regular weekday, we have Machlech Rishonim. Rashi holds, better do it by day so that you're not rushed. The Shilta says, better do it at night so it is immediately preceding, it is take up the Khafifa Tvila on a Leil Shabbos or a Lel Yantav, Lekuliyama, everybody holds, both Rashi and the Shiltas will hold, that she, she should do the Khafifa B'yayim, there's no choice, of course she can't do it at night. If it's Matzah Shabbos or Matzah Yantav, in that case everybody will hold that she should do the Khafifa at night, even according to Rashi, there's no choice, there's no option of doing it B'yayim. However, in the case where it is a Matzah Shabbos or a Matzah Yantav and it is Yantav, for instance, if there's a Yantav after Shabbos, a Yantav falls out Matzah Shabbos. In that case, Jesus brings out the Yalma, you may do the Chatzit, the Chafifa on Erev Shabbos. So basically, we have four scenarios. An ordinary weekday, Machayis Rishonim, Rashi holds, do the Chafifa Bayayim, Shiltis holds, do it at night. If it's a Leil Shabbos, a Friday night, or, or a, a, a Leil Yom Tif, which you, when you can't do the Chafifa Palayla, everybody will hold that you do the Chafifa Bayayim. If for some reason you can't do the Khafifa B'yoyim, if it's a Matzah Shabbos or a Matzah Yantif, everybody will agree you do the Khafifa at night. If, however, that Matzah Shabbos or Matzah Yantif is also a Yantif, so this won't allow the Khafifa to be done by Layla. In that case, you have to go back to the Arab Shabbos or the Arab Yantif and perform the Khalitza, the Khafifa at that point and time. Now, in practical halacha, we try to follow both shitas. We do part of the Khafifa B'yoyim to accommodate Rashi Shita, and we continue on to the Laila in order to be Mekayim the Shita Sashiltis. Now the Shach brings that in, the, in the, a case where Anisha cannot do Khafifa B'yayim and she needs to do it strictly by Laila, so there's a Takanas Marashal to prolong the Khafifa to give it as a designated time of a Shah Achas, and this way when it is a, a prescribed time of doing the Khafifa, that eliminates the concern of Muhumma Lebesa of doing a rush job since it is a predetermined our, the Shah Achas. This way, we've addressed Rashi's concern as well. Says the Mishnah, Nida Shabbat Ka'atzma Yom Shvi Shachris, a Matzah Tahira. Now we know a Nida in time of Chazal, she would see Dam, and then she would be Tommy for seven days, regardless if she sees or she doesn't see, and at the end of the seven days, at the Leil Shmini, at night, after the seventh day, she would be Toivel and be Toir again. Now, in order for that to happen, she needs to do a hefsek tahara. She needs to be marfrish tahara. She needs to remove herself from the dam. She needs to ascertain to be mevadei 
to be boidic to examine that her dam stopped at some point in time during the seven days. Now, at what point of the day does she need to make that bdika? Does she need to make it at the end of the day dafka? Or is it enough for her to make it any other time throughout the day? As well as another shayla, which day? First, second, third, seventh, is there any specification as to which day she needs to make her hefsek, her afrosha betahara? Says the Mishnah. Nida Shabbat Ka'atzma Yom Shvi Shachris. She made her bedika on the seventh day, Shachris, the morning, Umatza Tahira. And she finds herself to be Tahir. Ubena Shmashas La Yifri Shom. However, she did not make a bedika. She did not separate herself from the dam at the end of the day, the Bena Shmashas. Ula Acha Yomim Batko Umatza Tmeya. So during the seventh day, she made a bedika Shachris. She went to the mikveh that night. And after a while, she again found dam. So the hafrasha, the bedika that she did on the Yom Shvi, although it was b'shachris, it wasn't at the end part of the day, that is enough, that is sufficient to show, to prove, to ascertain that there was no more dam, and therefore when she is toivel, she is completely tor, and she is presumed to be tor, she has a cheskas tahara, and even if she'll find dam later on, it doesn't matter, the tumma will only be from then on, and not retroactive, we presume that until then she was completely tar. However, let's say she did the Bidika the seventh day, Shachris, and she finds them, and she wasn't Mafra, she didn't do an additional Bidika at the end of the day. And she was terrible. What happened later? Later on, a couple of days later, she was biding herself and she finds herself to be tar. Can we assume that she was tired all along? No. We assume that she's Bechaskas Tmeya. Why is that so? Because during her Bedika that she did during the seventh day, she found Dam. So there was no Hafrash of Tahara. There was nothing to prove that the Dam had stopped. And therefore she continues to be Bechaskas Tuma, even though today she found nothing. She needs to make a Hafrash of Tahara, prove that their Dam doesn't exist, has stopped flowing, and then be toivel, and then she'll have a cheskas tahara. So according to the Tanakama, straightforward, the seventh day, B'dikas Shachris is sufficient, if she finds no dam, to put her into cheskas tahara, although she finds dam later on, after she's toivel, she's still considered a cheskas tahara up until then. If, however, there was no proper afrasha b'tahara, during the Yom HaShvi, Shachris, she was waiting, and she found dam, and then she was toivel, even though later on, a couple of days later, she was t- she was biding herself and she found herself to be tar, that is not enough, and she is considered to continue con- and continues to be becheskas tuma until she is biding herself and then toivel. Now, in the ratio, in the first case, when she found herself to be tar, but later on, after the tefillah, she found dam. The mission said she is becheskas tahara. What happens now when she finds the dam? So the Mishnah, the Mishnah continues, umetama meis laes umepkida lepkida. She is matame retroactively, 24 hours retroactive, because of the halacha of Meislais that we learned in the beginning of the Masechta. We always, we're always chayshish that perhaps the dam had already um, exited the bias aprimi and entered the external bias, and that itself would already be matame the isha. Therefore, we are matame any taharis that she may be uh, have, have come into contact with in the last 24 hours, or pkida, or from the time of her last bedika. From then on until now, she is presumed to be Tame. But not from the Yemashvi. The Yemashvi had already established the Cheska Tahara. She is the Cheska Tahara up until the Re'iyah now. But we do go back a, a small amount of time of Me'es Le'es or Me'pkida Le'pkida like an ordinary Isha that sees Dam. Vim Yeshla Vest continues the Mishnah. If she has a vest, a fixed period, Daishaita, then we just assume that the dam came now and it is enough to be Matami her from now on. We don't go back in time at all. So this is the Shittas Tanakama that Abdika, Afrasha, Batahara, Biyema, Shvi, even if it's Shachris, it is sufficient to be considered Abdika, Afrasha, Hefsek, Tahara, and she is full fledged Cheskas, Tahira. Rabbi Yudha Aimer, it is not enough for the Isha to make her Bidika B'Shachris. She needs to make her Bidika B'Shachris, meaning from the Zman of Mincha Katana, two and a half hours before Shkia, until the end of the day. That is a window 
of the Bdika, meaning she can't make a Bdika Shachas and presume that she's completely tar. She needs to wait till the latter part, the Seif Hayoyim. Only then can she make a proper Hefsek Tahara and prove and be Mavada and ascertain that she has no more Dam. Even the second day of her Nidas, meaning the Chacham, the Basroi, the last sheet of the Mishnah, is being Machalish, above and beyond of the, of the Shita's Tanakama. Tanakama said, Mashvi, the seventh day Shachris, you can make a Hefzak Tahar. The Chacham, come to you even on the second day, you can do the same thing. You can make a Bedika Shachris, and that will be considered a proper Hefzak Tahar. Again, Chacham, Ma'imim, Afilu Bishnaim Lenidasa, Batko, Matzah Tahira, Uben Ashmash, Zloye Frisha. She did only Bedika Shachris, without Bedika Zvena Shmashis. So she goes and she makes a hefsek tara the second day of her nidays. She makes a hefsek tara b'shachris without adding any hefsek tara ben hashmoshes. And after the seventh day, she goes to the mikvah. A while later, she finds dam. She's motza dam. We assume that she's becheskas harizu becheskas tahara. The bedika that she made b'yei masheni b'shachris is is enough. Is sufficient to establish a proper Cheskas Tahara and she is tar up until the point and she'll sit down. So in conclusion, we have three Shittas in the Mishnah. We have the Shittas Tanakama, that Bedikas Yom HaShvi Shachris is sufficient. We have the Shittas of Yehuda, that you require a, a Bedika Bein HaShmoshes. Now, the, the Gemara later on seems to imply that according to Yehuda, a bedika has been hashmashas specifically b'yoyim hashvi. It needs to be done dafka on the seventh day. So it's two chumras. The chacham basroi, the last sheet of the Mishnah holds that even the yoyim sheni is enough, and even if it's only a bedika has shachris. Three sheetas: yoyim sheni shachris, yoyim shvi shachris, or yoyim shvi bein hashmashas. Says the Gemara, itmar rav amar zavavadai. Now this is going back on the first part of the Mishnah. If an Isha is mafresh with Tahara, she does a proper hefsek Tahara, but she finds Dam. So we say that it's not, it doesn't determine that she is Tahira and she's Becheskas Tuma. And even afterwards, if she goes and she finds herself Tahira, she's Tahira and she finds herself Tahira, it is not enough and she is still Becheskas Tuma. The question remains, is this a definite tumma? Is this considered a vadai? Or is it only a suffix? Meaning, is she considered to be a zava vadai? Because let's recall, we're speaking about after the Yimei uh, Nida and Tvila. Now she's already in the Yimei Haziva. If we're chayshish, if we're concerned that she saw Dam, she's considered to be a zava. But is it a vadai? Do we assume that she certainly is a zava? Or is it only a possibility? Itma, Rav Amar zava vadai. Velevi Amar zava suffix. If she sees Dam later on, according to Rav, she's a Vada Zava, she's a definite Zava. According to Rav, she's only, according to Levi, she's only a suffix Zava. It's a possibility. So, says the Gemara, hi. In which case, in the Mishnah, are they arguing? Ilema Arisha, referring to the, the Rasha, the first part of the Mishnah, when she did a Bdika, she found no Dam. And the Mishnah says that she's Becheskas Tahara. And even if she'll see Dam later on after the Tvila, she's considered to be Becheskas Tahara up until that point in the day. Harezu Becheskas Tani. There's no issue there. She's Becheskas Tahira. It doesn't apply any, uh, any Sveikas, any, any Machlekas, any Zavas here. She's Becheskas Tahira. Ella Sefer, rather, the Machlekas Rav, Rav, Rav and Levi is referring to the Sefer of the Mishnah. What does it say in the Sefer of the Mishnah? If she attempted to do a Badika and she found Dam, um, she's considered to be Becheskas Tuma, even if later on after Tfila she finds no Dam, she's still considered Becheskas Tuma until that point. Now, now, we have a machlekes, Rav and Levi. Is she beches kastuma, meaning she's definitely tummy? She's considered a zava vadai, she's being a carbon like any ordinary zava? Or is it merely a possibility? Bechayshish, we're concerned perhaps she might be a zava, she might have seen dam in the Yimei Haziva. Says the Gemara Bishlam, it's all good and well, suffix zava amrinan. Okay, you want to suspect she's, she's uh, a possible zava? Fine. Ela zava vadai. How could you say that she's a Zava Vadai? Ala Zava Vadai Nami Hari Batka Matsa Taira? How can you say that she's a Zava Vadai in the case where 
she didn't do a proper hefsek tahara. And later on, she found herself to be tar. So the mission says she's considered to be becheska as tuma, since she didn't do a proper hefsek tahara. Fine, so we're that she's seen dam. But since she didn't, find, she didn't find dam today, how could you go ahead and establish? Definitely, as she is a There's no dam here. She's tar. How can there be possibly a shita saying that she's a zavavada in that case? Ella, you must say ki itmar the rava levi. You must say that the machleg is rava levi is shmaita ba'a binafshi itmar. There's a case on its own. They're referring to a case which is actually not explicitly mentioned in the Mishnah. What's the case? Nida shabbat ga'atzmi mashri shachus a matzot meya nida that attempted to make a hafsek tahara. She was boiling herself the seventh day shachus. She found them. Uben hashmashas loy frisha that ben hashmashas she did not do a hafsek tahara. She was toivel. Ola acha yom and batko matzot meya. A couple of days later she went and she found them. She matzot meya. Then we have grounds to be chayshish. We have grounds to suspect that perhaps there was them all along. Look. During the Hefzak Tahar that she attempted, she found them. And a couple of days later, she again found them. Do we assume that there was them all along? That she had her ears all along, and then in that case, she's a Vade Zova? Or perhaps it's only a, only a, a suspicion, it's only a possibility. It does not render her a Vade Zova. Rav Amar Zava Vade, Velevi Amar Zava Suffolk. Why? Rav Amar Zava Vade, Kiva Dimi Karnim Sistmeya, since initially. During the Hefzik Tahara, she was found to be Tomei. And now again, she found um, Tomei Avadai. So we connect the dots, the Tuma of the Yem Ashvi, together with the Tuma today, we assume that it was just an ongoing occurrence and there was Dam all along, and therefore she's Avadai Tomei. V'lev Yomar, no, Suffolk Zavar, it's only a possibility. Why? Ema Paska Baini Baini. Perhaps she stopped seeing Dam in between the first Riyya and the current Riyya. So too, Levi added, in his rice, he added to the Mishnah, meaning to the latter part, to the safe of the Mishnah. The Mishnah says that an Isha that attempted to do a Hefzah Tahara during the Yom Shri and found them, and after a while, she didn't find them, she's V'chazkaz Tumah. But if she found them, then she is V'chazkaz Tumah, but it's only a Suffolk Zava. V'chein Tan Levi Mas Nisa, Achar Yomim, after these days, meaning after she made a hefsek tahara and she found them, and after a couple of days, bein batko matzot tahira, whether she was boidik and she found no dam, bein batko matzot meya, whether she was boidik, she did find them. In both cases, harezu suffix zava. So according to Levi, this case was ex- was was explicitly stated in the Mishnah. Levi added this case to the Mishnah. According to Levi, there are three cases mentioned in the Mishnah. The first case in the Mishnah was. When the Hefzik Tahara was successful, she found no dam. She is Becheskas Tahara. And although she fi- finds dam later on, she's still considered to be Becheskas Tahara from the Hefzik Tahara up until today. And now it's a new Re'iyah. Mishnah continues and says, she's Metam Meis Leis, Mepkida Lepkida, as an ordinary issue sees dam. Because the Hefzik Tahara provided her with that, Cheskas Tahara. The second Allah in the Mishnah says, that if Isha does find dam, during the Hefzak Tahara, in that case, she's presumed to be Tomei, she's Becheska Tzmeya. So then, even though she's Toivel, but later on, whether she finds them, whether she doesn't find them, in both cases, she's Becheska Tzuma, but merely a Suffolk Zava. Now, Taisa Rosh asks on Rav, how could Rav say that she's a Vade Zava? Since we're speaking about the Yimei Ziva here, the, the days that it's pretty unusual for an Isha to see them, how could Rav say that she's a Vade Zava and go bring a carbon? Perhaps she's not really a Zava and you're risking bringing a Chulun, a non-carbon La Azara. So the Taisa Rosh remains with Akasha. So perhaps that is really the Svara, that is the rationale to Levi's Shita. Levi holds the being that we're speaking about, the discussion here is regarding the Yimei Ziva, where, it, where it's unusual for Isha to see Dam, she's Becheska Stahara. The Mishnah stated earlier that during the Yimei Ziva, Isha has called the Aleph Yomim Becheska Stahara, and Isha is presumed to be Tor. It is not the usual occurrence for Isha to see Dam in those days. And therefore, even though we're speaking about that there was no proper Hefzik Tahara, nevertheless, she could not be considered to be a Vada Zava, although there was no Hefzik Tahara done. And although now she's seeing Dam again, we cannot necessarily presume that there was Dam coming all along since we're speaking about the Yemei Ziva, where Isha has 
Achaskas Tahara. Continues the Gemara. Umetama Meisleis. An Isha that did perform a successful Hefsek Tahara. She is Bechaskas Tahara. She was Toivu. Later on, she sees Dam again. She's Metame Meis Leis retroactively 24 hours. Ferti Gemara Leima Tehavet Yufta the Rava. It seems that this is a kasha, this is a refutation to Rava's Shita. The Amar Rava Leimar Sheine Isha Metame Meis Leis B'Tzayich Meizivasa. Rava learns that an Isha is Becheskas Tahara during her Meiziva, and even if she does see Dam, it's an unusual occurrence. She is not metame retroactively at all. So the Mishnah by us, which is discussing the Yimei Ziva, and the Mishnah says if Isha sees Dam during those, those Yimei Ziva, she's metame meis leis, seems to contradict Rav Zalach. Ask the Gemara of Allah was svine le Rav Chadazimna. Haven't we already asked on Rav one time? So why is it necessary to ask again? Says the Gemara, Hachi Kamrinan. This is what we need to say. Leima tahavet yufta de Rav nami miha. Perhaps this Mishnah is an additional stira refutation to Rava's shita. Perhaps if you have a teretz on the first kasha, so we'll have another kasha on Rava from this Mishnah. Is that so? Says the Gemara, no, not necessarily. Amlach Rava, kik tani metame meis leis, areish pirkin koi. When the Mishnah speaks about tumas meis leis, it's not speaking about a zava during the meiziva. A zava, an isha, I'm sorry, an isha during the meiziva. She has no... We have no reason to believe that there is dam there. She is fully becheskas tahara. The Mishnah, however, is referring to a case. Reish Pirkin Kai was speaking about a Tanaikis, a young girl, who aras of oide bevesavia. She saw dam when she was still at home, and then the Mishnah goes on to say that if she gets married and there is dam during the first bia, we assume that it's dam besulim, and it is not dam bia. Now afterwards, we assume the dam is dam bia. But I would, I would, there would be reason to believe that perhaps, being that she's only a Tanoikis, she's not of age yet. In that case, I would say since um, some time passes with no dam, so although now she again finds dam, I would assume that perhaps it is an unusual thing and she has a din of Absulas Damim, as discussed earlier in the Masechta, and there is no din of Me'es Le'es applied in that case. I would perhaps think since there are clean days there are Yom Tahirim uh, in between the uh, Re'ia of the Dam Basulim and now so I would think perhaps she's going back to her old state of Abusulas Damim when she is not of age yet she's not of nature to see Dam I would think that she has a din of Abusulas Damim an Isha who has not yet come of age to see Dam and we learned earlier in the Masechta that such an Isha, a young girl who is not um, of age to see Dam, when she does see Dam, there is no halacha of Me'es Le'es applied, she is not Matame retroactively, only Mekan Ve'elach, only going forward. So perhaps I would entertain such a Havam in a Kamash Malon. So the mission is teaching us, informing us that is not so. Even a Tinoikis will have the din of Me'es Le'es. But the bottom line is that the mission is not discussing an Isha seeing Dam during the Yemei Ziva. And therefore it's not a contradiction to Rav's Halacha that a Isha be Yemei Zivasa is considered Beches Kastahara and even when she does see Dam she is not Matame Meisleis. Continues the Mishnah, Em Yeish Lavest if an Isha, when we're discussing an Isha again during the Yemei Ziva that um, we, we, we uh, presume that she doesn't see Dam then, she's Beches Kastahara and if she does see Dam if the dam happened bizman vesta, when she had a fixed period, that during the time of her vest, she is not metami meis leis. We have the din of daya shata, which is only metami from that point going forward. Ask the Gemara, neima to have it yufter refuna rechia mashmul. It seems like this halach in the Mishnah that an isha during the yemei ziva has a din of kvias vest would seem to contradict the halacha. Of Rav Huna Rachia Mashmo, the Om Rav Huna Rachia Mashmo, Loimar Sheena Isha Kavas Lavest, we made Zivasa. He explains the Mishnah, the Mishnah we mentioned earlier, which says, Kal Achad Asar Bechaskas Tara, that an Isha during the 11 days of Yemei Ziva is considered to be Bechaskas Tara. So Shmuel interprets the Mishnah, explains the Mishnah to mean that during those days, an Isha cannot establish, cannot be Kaveya a vest. Since it is unusual for her to see during those days, therefore the halachas of Kriyas Vest don't apply then. Our Mishnah seems to say 
that even during the Yimei Ziva, the halachas of Veskavu are applied. It seems to be a stira on his halach. Answers the Gemara, Amalach Rafuna Rachia, Ki Amrinan, Ein Isha Kavas Lavest, Yimei Ziva. So when do we say this halacha? That an Isha is not Kaveya Vest during the Yimei Ziva. That is referring to the halacha of the Laibai Atlasa Zimna Lameyakar. We don't require three times to uproot it. Meaning, ordinarily when an Isha has a Ves Kavua, when she sees three times consecutively on a specific day, that is considered a Ves Kavua, and every time that day rolls around, that perhaps she'll see down during that day, she needs to perform a Vedika, she's not Boydik, she is presumed to be Tomei, and that Ves Kavua remains intact, remains in place, until she uproots it three times, thereby nullifying Mimavatel the Ves Kavua. However, and Isha during the Mezi Vasa, since it's unusual for her to see Dam during that time, time span, therefore, even if she's Kaveya, she establishes a vest three times, and that is considered a vest Kavua, she doesn't need to be accurate. She doesn't need to uproot it three times in order for it to become this battle. One time is enough. So, basically, what he's saying is that it is a Kula. This that we say that Isha be Mezi Vasa will not have the halach of the Hakiyas vest that is referring to a kula, meaning we're lenient. Since it is unusual, it is not the typical zman riyas dam, therefore the kviyas vest during that happened during that time span is not really a bona fide kviyas vest and can be oiker, can be nekar, much easier. However, it's not to say, it is not to mean that she can't be kaveya vest during that time. Certainly, she couldn't be Kaveya vest even during the Maze of Asa, and that is what the Mishnah is referring to. So it's not a Kash and Shmuel at all. Again, What do we mean? We don't require three times, three times of uprooting that day, meaning for her to see three times during a different day, thereby uprooting the vest. That is not required. And the Memesalakin is not a typical time, it is not considered a Zman Ri'iyah. Since the, the, um, the Damim are virtually non existent during that period, during that time span, during the Chad Asar Yimei Ziva, therefore it is much easier to be Eikar Veskavua, and even if that day rolls around again, if, if she was Eikar merely once, it is considered sufficient to be Eikar that vest. And we're not concerned with them arriving during that day. But, however, if she does see Dam during that day, it is considered Daya Shaita, since it certainly is considered a Ves Kavua, as long as it was a Nekar. So, in conclusion, during the Achada Sayyimei Ziva, Nisha certainly can be Kaveya a Ves Kavua. And if she sees Dam during that day, during the expected time, during the fixed period, the day that we expect them to come, certainly we assume Daya Shaita, we give her Tumah only going forward, we're not, we're not Chayshish, we don't suspect 24 hours going back, since it is a Veskavua. This that Shmuel said that Isha cannot have a dinner of Veskavua during the Meziva, that is only referring to a Kula, a leniency. It means to say that she could be Eikr, a Veskavua, that was established during the Meziva, she could be Eikr it much easier than an ordinary Veskavua. All, all that is required to be Eikr that vest is a one-time Akira, one time she sees a different day, that already is enough, it's sufficient to be Iker, the vest, Kavua, that was established during the May Ziva. Continues the Gemara, Rabbi Yuda, Imer, Rabbi Yuda holds that she needs to do a Badika Ben Ashmashes of the seventh day. Tanya, Amr Leid Rabbi Yuda, Chacham challenge Rabbi Yuda, how could you say, how could you require that an Isha should make her Hefzak Tahara specifically Dafka Ben Ashmashes of the seventh day? Meaning, the last part of the day, the end of the day, she has to go ahead and make a bedika, and that will determine that there's no more dam. If you would require, if the case would be that she has her hand placed in her eyes, the whole ben ashmashes, it is a muscle for performing a proper bedika straight throughout the whole ben ashmashes, from the beginning of the ben ashmashes till the end of the ben ashmashes then certainly you can assume that she's clean, that she has no dam. We will agree, it would, make, it, would, it would be logical, it would make sense that that is the best way to 
ascertain, to establish that there's no Adam. If you would require a complete Badika, all throughout the complete Zman of Ben Hashmoshes. Achshav, however, now, that even you, you're not requiring a Badika throughout the whole Ben Hashmoshes. It is sufficient for her to make a Badika, but in Chalamayla, meaning at the end of the day, last moment of the day, she doesn't need to make an ongoing Badika. So what, if you, what have you gained? If you're suspecting that after her Badika, there might be another Riyaz Dam, therefore, you would disagree with the Tanakam. You hold it's not enough to make a Badika Shachris. What, what's the point of Badika Shachris? She'll see Dam later on throughout the day. Therefore, you require Mimachai to make a Badika, and But what gain do you have for making a Badika in Mimachalamayla if a couple of minutes later she can go see Dam again? Achshav, now that you require a Badika Ben Hashemasha, perhaps as soon as she removed her hand, now she saw Dam. What difference does it make to make a hafrasha, a hafsek tahara, on the seventh day, my last part of the day? What is the difference between doing a hafrasha, a hafsek tahara, the seventh day, the latter part of the day? What is the difference between that and doing the first day in the morning? What's the difference? Either way, you're not ascertaining 100% that there's no more dam. Ask the Gemara, what do you mean Barishan? The, 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 we have a problem with the wording of the Chacham. Chacham say, what's the difference between the seventh day of Ben Hashemoshes, of Ben Chalmaila, and the first day of her Nidus? One second. There's no Shita that allows Abdika on the first day. How can you allow Abdika on the first day? The Tanakhama allowed the seventh day. The Chachamim and the Mishnah allowed the second day. There's no Shita that allows the first day, which is the first initial day of her Iyazdam, her source, her mind, her stop, her source. How can you even um, entertain such a possibility? As the Gemara Barisha and Mi'ikil Omar, is there anybody that holds that she can do a Hefzak on the first day? As the Gemara in, yes, we found such a Shita. Vatani, you've learned in the Bright, so Amar Rebbe, Sha'alti is Reb Yehis, Reb Shimon, Sha'alim Alchem Aderech. I asked Reb Yehis and Reb Shimon when they were traveling on the road. Nido Shabbat Ka'atzma, Yoim Zayin Shachris, or Matzah Tahira. An Isha that was biding herself the seventh day in the morning, and she found herself to be Tahir. Ubein Ashmashas Lay Frisha, and she did not do a Hefsek Tahira, Afrasha. Ubein Ashmashas of that day, and she was Tahivil, Ula Achar Yom. Later on, Batka, Matzah Tameya, she found Dam out. What is the halacha? Is a Badikas Shvi in the morning sufficient? Yes, it is enough to conclude that she's Becheskas Tahara and it is considered a kosher, kosher, satisfactory, hefsek Tahara. Shishi Chamishi Revi Shlishi Sheni Mai. What if she does it on the sixth day, and the fifth day, and the fourth day, and the third day, and the seventh day? Is that also considered to be a proper, halachically valid hefsek Tahara? I'm really like, no, there's no difference. Varish and Leishalti. Concludes Rebbe, I didn't, I didn't go ahead and ask them about the first day. I figured, first day is already going too far. You can't allow a hefsek on the first day. So I didn't want to push that far. I stopped at the second day. But Taizi Shlesh Alti, apparently I've erred. I made a toys. I should have asked regarding the first day as well. Why is that? Are the rest of the days, the second through the seventh, aren't they all considered becheskas tuma? She's considered to be presumed to have dam. V'chivan the pasak pasak. However, once she makes a badika and she finds no dam, she sees that the dam stops. Stopped. So although there was a cheskas tuma, the badika removes the cheskas tuma. Now she's considered to be v'cheskas tahara. So too, Rishon Nami. What, what's the difference between the second, the third, the fourth, and the first day? Given the pasak pasak, once she sees there's no more dam, the dam stops. She stops. So therefore, there really essentially is no difference between the first day and the other days, and therefore it would seem that the same heter of making hafrasha batahara on the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh would apply to the first day as well. She can do a hafrasha batahara on the first day, shachos. says the Gemara, Mikara my Sava, initially, what did Rebbe hold? That he did not, that he avoided the first day. Hoyel, v'uchzak mayim pasuach. Rebbe figured since on the first day the source, meaning the, the, the flow is, is pasuach, it's open, it's, it's so close to the, to the initial Mayan, to the Psichas HaMayan, the beginning of her Riyah. Therefore, there's no room to think that 
she can already make a hafsak tahara b'yayim rishon shachris. So, in conclusion, Rabbi held, Rabbi holds, according to the, uh, the Rabbi Yisir of Shimon, that you can make a hefsek tahara even on the first day, shachris. So, to summarize the shitas in the Gemara, we seem to have four shitas. Three mentioned in the Mishnah, and an additional shita mentioned in the Raisa in the Gemara. Tanakama holds, you can make a hefsek tahara yom shvi shachris. The Rabbi Yudah holds, yom shvi min amincha l'mayla dafka. Chachamim in the Mishnah hold, you can make a Vedika on the second day, Shachris. And Revi in the Gemara is Machadish, even on the first day, Shachris, you can make a Hefzik Tahar. Let's see the Mishnah. Hazav v'hazava Shabbat ko'atzum v'yam rishon amatzu tohar. Now, Azav and Azava need to do Sfira Shiva Nakim. They have to count seven days without any Riyos, and then go to the Mikvah, and there's a whole procedure. However, if they were only baidik partially, they were baidik, say, the first day, they was okay, matzotar, they found nothing, they were tar, or bimashvi, matzotar, so they counted only the first and the seventh, they were baidik only on the first and the seventh. Ushar yam shibin time lay batku, they didn't do a badika on the rest of the days. So we have three shittas. Rablezoi ma'arei mecheskas tahara, the badika on the first and the seventh is sufficient to consider them to be mecheskas tahara. And nothing more is required. It is considered as if they only counted two days, the first and the seventh. The days that they actually performed the Badika, that counts on the Cheshman. That can be calculated. So they all have two days, they have to continue to count another five to complete the seven. The, the days before the seventh get cancelled, Rechoshish were concerned there was a Re'iyah in between the first and the seventh, therefore it invalidates it, it's mavatalit, and they have to start fresh, they only have the seventh day, and they have to count another six to complete their calculation of seven days. Three shittas in the Mishnah, in a case where Zav and Zav will bite the first and the seventh, according to Rebbe it is fully um, sufficient, it is considered to be Abdika's Shiva Yamim, according to Rabbi Yeshua, it is only Abdika's Risha and Shvi, they have to complete it by counting another five days. According to Rebekiva, it is only uh, Bdika Siyemechad. He only has the Bdika of the seventh day to count for the Cheshman of Shiva Niki. Says the Gemara, Tanya, Omer of Lezer Yeshua. How could you say that the first and the seventh count? If we're concerned that there was a Re'iyah in between the two days, so the Halach is, if a Zav and a Zav had a Re'iyah somewhere uh, in the um, seven days, it totally invalidates it. It's mavatal, the complete cheshman, and they have to start again. So how can you say that the first and the seventh are counted together? If there was a, a re'iyah somewhere in between, say on the third day, that would be mavatal the first day. Tanya Amr of Lazar Bishul Lidvarecha, according to Yoshita, Atamoyne Bisarugan. You're counting discontinuously. Vatayra Amra, Achar Titar. She can only be tar after. Achar Achalakulan. After all seven days, Shalaytei Tumum of Sekhus Benayim without any interruption. Meaning all seven days are considered to be one unit. They're a singular unit. You can't be mafsik in between them. It's only if it's a consecutive seven days, that's when it's considered to be Shiva Nakim. So if you're concerned that there was a re in between, that invalidates the first day. You're don't, you don't admit to me. You're not moide bezav shor a keri. Bezav, during his Shiva Nakim seen a keri, that is not a ziva, that is a keri, that is a different type of re'iyah. As a more lenient re'iyah. So in that case, we learn from a Pasuk that it's only mevatal that day, and the other day still counts, still stand. So aren't you moida that in that case, it is discontinuous, it is a b'seirugin? Another example. Ube Nazar, shehilech schachos of rois. Nazar can become tummy, and he walked under a schachos, that is a overhang of branches, a prois, those are stones that are protruding from a wall, and he walked underneath them, and there is a suffix, there is a a chashash, that there is a, a mace underneath them, and he walked into the oil hamaze. It is a suffolk oil hamaze. So in that case, the Gemara is going to explain later that it's only a derabonon. It's only a tumma derabonon. So in that case, the Chacham said, you have to skip over that day, meaning you can't count, the nother needs to count 30 days for his zeros. You can't count the days of tumma that happened through becoming tummy with a schaches or froys. So in that case as well, you're counting the Sirugin. You're counting the days prior to his Chachis surprise, and you're adding it to the days that he counted afterwards, and it is not 
one continuous counting. He's counting When a nazar becomes tummy, everything falls down. Meaning, you're about the whole counting, the whole calculation. You can't count discontinuously. So you might, you ask him two cases where discontinuous counting is allowed. So in this case as well, in our Mishnah, you can be minor sirugan, it's okay. For Velezer, Velezer counters, no. Be Shlaime, all is well over there. And the who saw Kerry, Rishlaime Hassam, Latama Baam Rachmana, Shane is a Saras Aliyama, there's a Chilish Akra, Teres Machalish, when there's a Ria of a Kerry, it only says, sir, you only dissolve that day. And we leave the other days intact. Elamai, you have a question, that perhaps it can create a confusion. Somebody, an observer, will say, well, you see that even if there's a Ria during the Shiva in Akiyam, you can still count the other, the other days. The imishum achlufi, perhaps it can create a confusion. Zav balkeri loy michlaf. A zav that saw a ria zayiv during a shivan akim, in that case, the shivan akim become nizbatel. We will not confuse it, will not become nizchalaf with a balkeri who merely saw keri, where in that case the Torah specifically says he's only being mavatel the day of the keri and not the other days. Those two cases are not confusable, they're not interchangeable, and there's no chashash concern for confusion. As well, in the case of a Nazir, it's also okay. Nazir, Shehilach al Gabi, Shachar, you're surprised. Nami, we die rice, oil, mal, yubinan. Now, Torah, in order for Nazir to become tummy, you need a proper oil with a Zavadai mace. In this case, it's only Drabonon. Drabonon with the Gazer, it's Xayer, Drabonon. Drabonon with the rice, oil, Michlav. There's no room for confusion. It's an exceptional case. It's a specific type of oil of a Shachar, it's a surprise. It's not the typical type of a tent of a house where the oil is Matami, we die rice. Therefore, the Chacham have room to be lenient and to allow him only to mevata, not to count that day, the day of the Tumah, the days that he is Tameh, but to still continue counting from where he left off and not to mevata all the Yemei Hanaziris that were counted before the Tumah. So these two cases are really exceptions. Aval Hacha, in our case, where Zav is trying to count the Shiva Nekim, and he only counted the first and the seventh. And there's a concern to the Lachshash that he saw Ziva, during the seven days that he wasn't counted, during the day that he hadn't counted. So if you're chayshish, you're concerned, you are Bishur, who only wants to count the first and the seventh for his, um, for his Shiva Nekiyim. You want to be chayshish, you're concerned that during the, in between the, between the first and the seventh, there was a re'i, if you're chayshish that he saw Besafik, a person observer will say, well, you know why we're not counting the middle days? Because there was a re'i, there was a re'i of a za'iv. So, the fact that you're allowing the first and the seventh to stay intact will be a room, will be room for confusion that an observer might say, might deduce from there, that even a, a Zav who actually sees Ziva during a Shiva Nekiyim, it doesn't make the, the, uh, the Shiva Nekiyim this battle, and everything else, everything remains intact. So you can't allow that to happen. Therefore, I, agree, I disagree with your Shita, and the comparison to a Zav seeing a Keri or another under the Shachar Surprise is not a proper comparison. Says the Gemara, Tani Rabbi Yehzeh of Shimon Amri, near and Rabbi Lezer and Rabbi Yeshua. It seems that the sheet of Rabbi Lezer is more correct than the sheet of Rabbi Yeshua, meaning that the fact that there was a B'dikas Rishon and a B'dikas Shvi, that is sufficient to be considered B'cheskas Tahara and not more, no more is necessary. However, the sheet of Rabbi Kiva, who says that he only has a seven day to count for himself, everything else becomes his battle because we're chayshes that there was real. That it actually preferred this sheet is actually preferred over the other sheetas. However, we pass on Rabbi Lezer that the Zava and Zava are considered to be becheskas tahara by merely doing abdikas rishayin oshvi. It com- it's completely considered like a B'dika Shivan Akiyam, a Sphere Shivan Akiyam, and he's completely eligible to become Tar. So in conclusion, we have three sheets in the Mishnah, a case where a Zavan Zava did not perform Shivan Akiyam, B'dika Shivan Akiyam consecutively, however, he did a B'dika Rishan and a B'dika Shvi, Kodra Blazer, he's considered to be Baduk, his B'cheskas Tahar is sufficient, and that's how the Gemara concludes. According to Rishua, he only has the first and the seventh. He has to complete the Shiva Nekim by adding another five days. According to Rabakiva, he only has a seventh day to count for himself. He needs to add another six to complete the Shiva Nekim.